Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Hey, Fit Mama, welcome to today's episode about delicate discipline, where we're going to talk today specifically about this concept that I created around being disciplined with yourself in a very loving, delicate, compassionate way, which isn't always easy, as we know. One of the things I hear most from Fit Mamas is, I need to start X, Y, or Z, or I should get to blah, 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 or I have to do X, Y, and Z. And these shoulds and have tos are all very pushing towards ourselves. And I'm pretty sure if you're anything like me or any of the fit mamas that I've worked with, you do not like having someone tell you what you should or shouldn't do, even if that person is you. So it leads me to this concept of being disciplined and being focused and being a little bit hard on yourself in a really loving way. And this is possible because we all know that in this day and age where it is absolute distraction central and within one hour, I think we can be distracted probably 450 times by our phone, by a phone ringing, by a pop-up message or notification, by our kids, by our boss, a colleague, whatever it is, we are living in the most distracted environment of our whole existence as humans. And this is not just my opinion. This is truly a fact. And this is exactly why there is so much talk right now around anxiety, around overwhelm, around burnout, around refocusing on what's really important to you. Because the beautiful iPhone and Android, whatever smartphone or device you have, it's not about if you have one, it's pretty much which one do you have. We all have them now. And whether you work from your phone or you're able to work more flexible hours because of your phone, or your phone is just your camera and your calendar and your connection to the outside world, We're seeing in the data that this is negatively and adversely affecting us. And one of those reasons is because of this continual distraction. So we might have a really great goal today, like going to the gym or going to have a walk or going to take some time for a meditation or journaling or quiet time or creating space to breathe which is what I'm always talking about here at Fit Mama. And the reason why is because these are the things that actually help us. And while we think we need to join a gym or start a new program or do something external to ourselves, really it's about creating a little bit more time and space so we aren't feeling rushed, stressed, and going full tilt. And then we feel the need to procrastinate or have distractions and escapes because we're truly so overwhelmed. Enter in delicate discipline, right? Having that intention just isn't enough because there are so many interruptions that stop us along the way. So when we have a thought that is such as, oh, what's the weather like outside? Or, oh, I wonder what that means. Or, oh, I'm just going to check this or that. We reach for our phone immediately and we Google it or we check out the weather app or we, you know, text a friend or whoever to find out the answer to what we're looking for. And this is a very compulsive behavior. And it's one that we really have just created over the last number of years since the advent of these smartphones. I got my first smartphone where I could check my email on it. I remember in 2007. And that's now 11 years ago from the taping of this episode of the podcast. And, you know, that means it's just over a decade that we've been able to, at any time, on a whim, find the answers we're looking for, right? We don't need to even think anymore. We just whip out the calculator and punch it in. So this very common behavior of 
immediate instant gratification is very real and it is one of the first things that leads us to being so distracted and to getting off course with the intentions and the goals that we set in our day. Because immediately you can probably think of a time where you had a intention or a goal to do something, go somewhere, take care of something or whatever the case was. And all of a sudden you looked at your clock and you were like, whoa, I've just been scrolling Facebook or Instagram or checking my emails for an hour, right? And that was an hour that you could have been spending with you. Because looking back on that hour of being reactive and answering emails or calling people back or doing whatever you thought you needed to do that distracted you maybe wasn't the best use of your time. And so looking back on these incidents, incidents where you were just scrolling for an hour straight, not commenting, just looking, I want you to really, really be honest with yourself here for a minute and look within and ask yourself, how did I feel after that hour of scrolling? How would I have felt if I was delicately disciplined and put the phone down or away and got on the treadmill or went out for a walk in nature? How would I have felt different? And I want you to actually close your eyes for a minute here. Not if you're driving, but if you're doing something where you can close your eyes safely. Close those eyes and imagine that feeling when you just finish a workout or you just finish meditating or you just finish doing something for yourself. Sitting in the sauna, reading a good book, decorating, dancing, whatever it is. How do you feel in that moment? Because it's those feelings that you're bringing up right now of joy, of gratitude, of confidence, of feeling like you deserve a pat on the back and you did something for yourself that feels so good, those feelings are actually available to you anytime. And we think that we can obtain them in these ways that come from distraction. We think that we can obtain these really good feelings of wow, we did well for ourselves, we took care of ourselves, we did something, we loved ourselves. We think that can come, that same amazing feeling that you're feeling just after you did that thing and worked out and took care of yourself. That feeling we think can come from scrolling Facebook or Instagram. We think it can come from spending two hours on Pinterest and deciding how we're going to redecorate our home. We think that these joyful, positive, high, elevated emotional feelings come from these external things. And they don't. They don't even come from the workout. They don't even come from your external environment. But where they do come from is from within. And you get to tap into that every single day. And the way that I really want to have you focus on today is your self-talk. Because we are constantly and consistently talking to ourselves all day. And you'll hear me talk about head talk all the time, but it's because it comes up so often. And I always talk about starting to become aware of what is going on in your head. Are you spending your moments day to day always focused on saying things to yourself like, you're not good enough. You didn't do that. Look, that happened again. It always happens to you, right? Remembering what we talked about in last episode around a scarcity mindset, what you're focusing on, especially with that head talk, is going to be what your reality is made up of but you can actually infiltrate your own brain and put in there whatever thoughts that you want to think. So how does this come back to that delicate discipline? Well, first off, being disciplined around the words and the comments you're making in your own head is a really great place to start. Realizing that 
Yeah, I wasn't being disciplined. And yesterday I went down a rabbit hole of self-loathing and loneliness that I forgot even existed because I've been really good, right? And we say these things to ourselves like, I've been good and I've been bad. I ate the cake or I had such a bad weekend because I ate all the donuts or whatever the case is. And these words start to create our reality, telling us we are bad, telling us we can't do things, telling us it's so hard. And when we stay in that mindset, Being disciplined, especially delicately disciplined, feels so hard. It feels like, oh, waking up Monday morning and dragging myself to the gym is going to be the hardest thing because I'm going to feel bloated. I'm going to feel hungover. I'm going to feel guilty. I'm going to feel blah, blah, blah. So focusing on what you can be thinking that is actually going to support you along the way is what I want to talk about today. And this begins with that delicate discipline. It begins with the delicate part. I didn't say discipline with delicacy, because that probably wouldn't even make sense. But I really mean delicate. The word I want you to hear isn't discipline. It's actually the delicate part. Because we are so hard on ourselves. And as I've mentioned before, one of the things I hear the most from women, and I've said this so many times to myself I can't even count, is I am my own worst enemy. I am the hardest on myself. I am the one who sees all my flaws. I am the one who focuses on my flaws. I am the one who sees all the problems and how things aren't the way I want them to be. I am the one. So hey, guess what? If you are your own worst enemy, You can become your own best friend. You can be the provider of love to yourself that you cannot, no matter how close you are with anyone else, get from anyone else. It's that loving self-compassion and talking to yourself like you would your newborn baby, your new puppy, that cutest little thing you've ever laid your eyes on is in fact within you. And it does want to hear the loving words that you speak to another towards yourself. It does want to feel the light, the sun shining, basking in the glory of you honoring yourself so badly. That little you in there wanting all the love that you seek is desperately wanting you to be delicate with yourself to be loving with yourself, to say, it's okay, honey, if you slept in. It's okay that you missed your workout. You can still feel good now through talking to yourself, through being kind to yourself. Because you know what? Through that lens of kind compassion towards you, I'm going to guarantee you 150% that you will make better decisions later on, even if it's not now, even if it's not in one minute from now, and even if you don't go for a workout later. You talking to yourself with delicate, loving kindness will absolutely change the choices that you make. And again, this is not my opinion. And this is a lot to do with the research out there. Two of the places that I find to be the most effective for research is one, heartmath.org, the HeartMath Institute. HeartMath is something that is so, so incredible. And it's only just new over the last number of years, starting to understand how we as heart-centered beings Connecting back into our heart space and the frequency that's going on in our heart rather than our heads makes all the difference. And I am always talking about this given the love in the Love Fit Mama way. It is all about the heart. It is all about coming back to you, coming back to the loving core of who you are before someone instilled in you the fear of God before someone instilled in you that you weren't good enough, before someone questioned your perfection, 
before someone tried to dim your light. And I was just reading this beautiful post by January Harshi. If you don't follow her yet, she has the Harshi podcast. And she is a beautiful mom of six children. And she has just great inspirational posts on Instagram and her Insta stories. And she just is a beautiful soul. And what she was talking about in a recent post that I read was this idea of dimming our own light, of not putting our best foot forward because someone else might poo-poo us, think that we're bad, think that we're cocky, think that we're trying so hard. People want you to fail, is what she said. People want to see that you gave up, that you were shining your light, and then it got dimmed and dimmed and dimmed by so many people confronting you, telling you're not good enough, telling you, why are you so happy? I've gotten that so many times, too many times to count, where people have said, oh, God, why are you so happy? I've had people tell me, tone it down. It's early in the morning. I've had people tell me, I don't feel good about myself when I'm around you because you're so happy. That makes me feel awful. And while I'm open to you telling me something like that, because it is a lesson for me to hear these things, the lesson lies in me being okay with who I am. And if happiness, true happiness is my jam and I show up feeling good, It does not need to mean that you can't feel good. That's that scarcity mindset coming back in. Well, if she's so happy, well, I can never be that happy. There's not enough happy to go around. I beg to differ, Fit Mama, and I know there is more than enough. Just like that love that the more we spread, the more comes back to us. The more we give away, the more we feel inside, the truth is is that the more delicate we are with ourselves, the more delicate and loving we can be with others. And showing our discipline side of delicate involves setting your alarm and then waking up when it goes off. That beautiful, delicate discipline that you show for yourself sets an example for your husband or wife, sets an example for your kids, sets an example for those around you, that allows them to imagine what's possible for me. Even if right now you waking up early is so confronting, it makes me feel bad about myself, it still plants a little seed in my mind that, hey, if she can do it, maybe I can too. And being delicately disciplined with yourself allows you to lead from the heart. I've been reading a book that I cannot stop. I've actually been listening to it on Audible and I really despise taking out my earphones when I have to do something else because I'm loving listening to her voice. It's the lovely and beautiful, brilliant Brene Brown. If you don't know her yet, find her and read everything she's ever written because she's brilliant and she will change your life. And her latest book, Dare to Lead, is mind-blowing. It's affirming. It's reaffirming things that I've known, things that I've felt, things that I've seen in the leadership environment. It took me back to the days when I was a GM, general manager at a Good Life Fitness Club, and I had a big staff of about 30 people and a huge club membership and a huge membership that I had to keep happy. And I remember the days where no one ever seemed happy. No one ever seemed satisfied. Not the employees, not the members, not the people that were above me looking to see how I was doing. And I remember feeling that there were aspects of my leadership that I was struggling with. And then there were other aspects of my leadership that I was just nailing because I knew that I was meant to lead from the heart. And even if I was told to do something that didn't feel quite right, if I stuck to my heart and at the same time empowered those around me, set an example that started from integrity, not, hey, do what I tell you to do, don't do what I do, right? That kind of leadership changes everything. And I just love what she talks about. So I'll let you check out that book. But she gives you a lot of information as well as a lot of inspiration towards leadership. And the first person, Fit Mama, as I always say, that you are here to lead is you. Is you. 
And if you are not taking care of you, if you are not giving yourself the delicate and the discipline to actually follow through without someone looking over your shoulder, without someone following up with you, then what example are you setting? What are you setting yourself up for in the future as well? There are so many good questions that come from this, and I could obviously keep talking for hours, as you know, but I really want to go back to this idea of delicate discipline. And I want to give you a couple of tools here. The first one I really want you to think about is differentiating the delicate part from this concept of lazy, which that word even just kind of feels like daggers in my back. Because this word lazy either maybe was put upon you, placed upon you. You're lazy. Don't be lazy. Get up. You got to go. What are you doing? If you're not doing something, we're somehow decided we're labeled as lazy. So we go, go, go and do, do, do. And all day we're doing, doing, doing. And are we feeling really good about ourselves? Mm, Probably not. So I really want you to allow this delicate part to take over the doing, to be delicate enough with yourself to know that doing isn't the goal. Realize that everything, in fact, will get done. It will. It just will. You always know the laundry is going to get done. You always know the kids are going to eat. You always know certain things will get done. But it doesn't have to come with it all this negative motivation. And we do use negativity to motivate ourselves often, right? We think it works. We think, oh, I got to get on the scale because if I see I'm five pounds heavier, well, that'll motivate me to stop eating so much. But it doesn't always work out that way, does it? So how about trying something different and trying something that starts with the delicate side where you don't use words like lazy or you have to, or you should, or you're not good enough. And we start to use words like, thank you, or I am, with a positive thing after it. Instead of I am lazy, we go to I am strong, I am capable, I am beautiful. And whatever we think in our head this may do to us, what we have to realize is that the delicate part doesn't come from the head. It comes from the heart. So getting out of our head and into our heart is where the magic lies, that mama. So the delicate part is where you focus on. The discipline is in the head, right? We always go, oh, I got to do this. I have to do that. I, I was told this is going to help me lose weight. I should do this more, blah, blah, blah. So that's going to be in the head. That's the discipline part. And setting plans and goals and putting things in your agenda and having alarms and having follow-up friends or coaches or whatever the case is, is good. Absolutely. I'm not negating that. But what I am absolutely emphasizing here is that if you are not motivated from the heart, if you're motivated from the head, which is the superficial, which is the external, which is all those people around you, what will they think if I blah, 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 then you aren't going to actually follow through long term, no matter what. So begin with the delicate to start from the heart. Okay, say that to yourself. Start from the heart. And that's one of those things that you can have as a trigger when you notice something triggers you to say, hey, oh, I'm being lazy. I got to get up. I got to do all these things on my to-do list. I have so many things to do still, but I'm so tired and overwhelmed. Something should click within you that immediately says start from the heart. And I always have women put their hand on their heart So you can do the same thing now is put your hand on your heart. Feel your heart because this is where you really are going to find your inspiration and motivation. It isn't from your head. So dropping down into your heart, noticing the words that you say, and becoming really delicate with yourself, delineating between head talk and heart talk right? Head talk is, I am lazy. Heart talk is, I am perfect. I am whole. Notice the difference with that? I am lazy. I am fat. I am ugly. I am not good enough. Versus, I am peaceful. 
I am kind. I am generous. I am loving. That's head talk versus heart talk. Your head can say all these things that were put into it from all these people around you, but it's your heart, fit mama, that really knows. And that's the connection to your core when you have that gut feeling, right? And I've created recently this visual that I really want to get you focused in on so that you can understand this concept a little bit deeper. So I want you to imagine your head in the clouds, okay? Your head is literally in a cloud. Picture a big, white, gray, poofy cloud all around your head. That is a pretty literal picture for our heads, right? We often have our head in the clouds, and that's not meaning daydreaming as get your head out of the clouds. It really just means in that dense fog that is our perceptions, that is what we think about all day, is those thoughts of negativity, of have to's, should do's, gotta do, to do's, all that stuff is our head in the clouds, not really seeing clearly because we're not in our heart space. I want you to imagine out of your cloudy head stems a beautiful, colorful, vividly vibrant rainbow that arcs up over your heart and down to your belly, your core, the center, right around your belly button and below, just below. Down there, it's pretty cloudy too. I want you to imagine a second cloud on the other side of this beautiful rainbow, all around your belly. Nice, big, poofy, cushy cloud. You don't have to suck in your belly. You don't have to change who you are. You just sit in this cloud of poof. That is a pretty cloudy space too. That's your core. Your head and your core both spend a lot of time in the clouds. We often feel like we have to suck in our belly or have to change who we are. We have to please people and change the things that we want to do to accommodate others. That's pretty cloudy. We often had a lot of trauma or have current trauma going on in that deeper part of our core and pelvis. So it can get pretty cloudy down there. But that vibrant, vividly beautiful rainbow that stretches over our heart, through our heart. It's going in front of you, arcing up. It's going through you, bringing beautiful, bright light all through your body. It's arcing behind you, so it's protecting you. And you are now a little cloud in the head, a little cloud in the core, and a big, bright rainbow all around you, stemming from your heart. We can either choose to focus all our attention and hang out in our head, be in the clouds saying, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, there's not enough time for this. Oh, he wronged me. She didn't do this. Why doesn't he help? And we can hang out there all the time in the clouds, or we can hang out in our core trauma. We can hang out in where we were wronged long ago. We can be in that space where we're not good enough, where we lack where we want to hang out in the scarcity mindset because actually it's so comfortable there. What if I were to actually meet my goals or my dreams were to come true? That would feel really uncomfortable. So we don't go there. We just kind of hang out in the clouds. But what I urge you to do and practice and just give it a shot because it's going to feel a whole hell of a lot better, Fit Mama, is hanging out in the rainbow in the rainbow that surrounds your heart space, that reaches out all around you to brighten up the lives of others. That is your gift. That is your purpose. That is what you do when you're looking for something to do. It's right there. It's available to you all the time. If you can get out of your head for long enough to feel into your heart and talk rainbow talk, Rainbow talk is love talk. Rainbow talk is cheesy talk. Rainbow talk is the stuff that people made fun of me for all my life. And I'm here with a microphone, no less, to tell you that that is the place to hang out in because that is the place of beauty. That is the place of good feelings. That is the place of everything you've ever wanted being your reality. 
right now, in this moment, that is available to you. And if you can be delicate with yourself and start from the heart, Fit Mama, get out of your head, allow yourself to feel good now through positive self-talk, through not letting those old stories keep dictating how we feel. Be delicately disciplined with yourself to honor your body's needs. The body's needs for movement, for hydration, for calm, relaxing meditation. Those are a gift and those are available to you. And you are making the choice not to do them if you don't. And you can make the choice to do it. And it is available to you always. So I want you to imagine that bright, vivid rainbow all around you, starting from the heart, shining its beauty unapologetically on all those around you. Focus on your kids. Look into their eyes. Listen to them. Put away the phone. Bring it back. To this moment, without all the stories, without all the trauma, without all the have tos and shoulds, start from the heart and see yourself honor yourself and watch how your behavior changes, how your choices change, how your actions and your words that you're using to others start to reflect this loving mindset that begins with delicate discipline, Fit Mama. So grateful for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. I am so eternally grateful. Have a great day, Fit Mama. Namaste.